Yes, so good morning everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Tom and I'm working for a company in the Netherlands called Post Transmission Technology. And uh, the title of my talk today is The Effect of Surface Finish on the Thick Strength of a Post Bell Component. And I would like to mention my co worker, Mr. Pennings, uh, Straya Kamat, and Ms. Maria Nia, my former colleague, who contributed a lot to this work. Uh, I, I want to thank Professor Sell for you know, addressing this very important topic for us. Uh, and you, as, as it will be up here in my talk, you can see how that's related to the effect of fatigue. Okay, so first let me give you a brief, brief introduction about the product we are making, the push belt. I don't know whether any of you have uh, ever heard of it, but we are push belt the most important component of the so-called continuously variable uh, transmission. And we apply them for cars. So unlike the conventional transmission, our push bell is you know, pushing the, the, the top from the engine to the wheel in a stepless method. So we have two conical pulleys, and by that you can take every possible position uh, of, the, of, the, of the ratio, and so we can have a very nice uh, stepless uh, shifting, uh, so it's very comfortable to drive the car. And also we can enable the car to operate in the most efficient point, so this one very, uh, also very few consumers are efficient. Okay. There's a lot of CVT, but the product we are making is the push bell. And maybe you never heard of it, but we already have something like 50 million car driving with the system on the market. Okay, and ju I just want to just to remember this number is something like 10 million. So the years, the, the yearly production of our, our compound, compound about the push bell is about 10 million per year. So maybe this is the market. Maybe. Okay. So um, what I want to talk about is this push bell we are making. Uh, okay. So what is it? This is uh, consistent, just steel, so it's consisting of about 400 of this kind of plate-like, uh, we are calling element, just made from uh, two steel, so conventional two steel. And they are held together by two set of very high alloy moraison steel. So they just keep together like this one. And um, so we are calling that the look set. And today I want to talk with you about the elements. So. Uh, they are mostly five blankets, so what you do is you just cut them through the like this one. We are using five blankets because we just want to have a very nice surface finish uh, on the functional surface of the, <coughs> the parts. So you just cut into the cut into the into the you know, the, the board. Okay. And uh, uh, so first we are making the five blanket process. After that we just do a conventional branch attachment. So after that we have something like hardness like this one. And at the final step, we just do some stone tempering process just to removing the burr. It's up to, up to the fine banking. So that's it. Okay. So um, in, uh, in operation, the, the lot of force is acting on the elements because you have the pulley collecting force. You know, to transfer the top, you have a lot of force acting. And because of those force, uh, you know, high, high stress is arising, especially at the notch of the element as well. And as a consequence, like for the Okay, and uh, we saw that they have this is something like we are calling the very fine blanking groups, and we saw you later how, how small it is, very fine blanking groups. Okay, and um, you know the downsizing requirement for the customer nowadays requires us to think about uh, not only improving the, 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 the service we have right now, but also think about uh, alternative service because you know we more or less you know at the end of the, of the materials. Okay, and also for proposed quality assurance, just to give a number, you know, we make something like 10 million push bell a year, time 400 a push bell. We almost arriving at something like a, a billion components a year. And in order to, to, to maintain the quality of this, we have to we have to do a lot of things. And if we can, you know, know what to do there, then we can save a lot of money. There. So that's the reason why we entering this uh, this, uh, this, uh, this work. Okay. So the, 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 the research question we are putting ourselves here is uh, how can we relate something like a manufacturing process parameters to the fatigue performance of the components? Okay. And uh, well, the approach which is widely used and in my opinion quite successful is uh, in, uh, in uh, 
in the literature is we are calling the the crack line across from so we are doing on things like this one like the crack. And then we are entering the so called Kitagaba Takashi. Yeah. I was hoping that Professor Sher will explain this in in Sito, but I just briefly mentioned um, the Kitagawa Kitagawa Takashi diagram is just about in the limit between something of crack size on this side, the uh, uh, open axis, and fatty strength of the material. Okay. In our interest, we are interested in the area where you, you don't have fatigue failure somewhere here. And then when you are low, where your loading stress is high or you have a big crack, then you are have fatigue failure. So that's why we are uh, looking at this, uh, this, this diagram. Okay. There is also some other description of this diagram which was, was, I think was better than this, the one from my other, but I will show you later one. Okay. So how are we going to construct this diagram? Okay. Actually, when we are starting with just a, a few years ago, we are starting with almost no idea about the assistance and kind of thing. So we are starting very simple. We are just using a very common relation from literature. Uh, the fatigue strength is something like 1.6, the half, the biggest half. And then by that, constructing the, calculating the theoretical fatigue strength material. So we say that is the fatigue strength material without defects. Okay. And then we already have some for some number for this axis. We have to transform them from the, I think they are made by the ratio of minus one. So we have to transform the stress until the ratio of zero point one. It's where we are interested. Okay, then we already have one one line of the curve. The next line I just found, just by going to have Professor Richie is also here, but I found some paper of him about, I think the, like the same set, and found some, uh, you know, that to get fresh on this, the, the border here. And with those two literature numbers, we already can construct this diagram and also the uh, not life. Okay. Theoretically, you can all see that you know for our very high strength steel, 700, 800 feet of hardness, you are dealing with very small, very small critical size in the dimension of the research. Okay. Later, we did some experiment, and one of them is this one. We just electro, electro polish the notch by some very commercial, commercial process. We only do commercial process because you know we always think about how to upscale those uh, activity to to what we are and uh, see. Okay? okay, and we also have some measurement done uh, by uh, MCL development, and then you can see that you know we are not far from the picture where we have here. So that's very nice. Um, okay, so then we have our Kitagawa Takashi diagram actually for the material I think, and then after that we can think okay how can we translate those. Activity into our into our so the finished process. Okay. Oh, uh, while doing uh, alternative process, we also saw that the pseudo stress play a big role. So we just we just do something like um, very common uh, sort of knowledge of how the Kitagawa diagram change when we have something like uh, compressive or uh, tensile residual stresses. So when you have something like uh, compressive. The so stress somehow increasing the fatigue limit when you have compressive one. We can you can see that here by a, a very simple transformation uh, from the head factor, and then we, we get you some uh, literature. Uh, we found literature about how the delta K threshold changes as a function of stress ratio. It's a kind of pseudo stress function, and then we just put in our measurement ourselves, and then just draw lines. So it's quite practical uh, how to really approach it and. I have to say we have to extrapolate them into the negative uh, speculation cycles. Okay, so let's see how it works. Okay, um, with those very simple approaches, we only did, we can do something like what is the function hardness in this one, and that's something really interesting because we we need parallel product and we need to understand how those parameters are affecting our quality of our products. Okay, so the pseudo stress, you know, just have to remind that you just more or less just blow up the diagram itself. Okay. So, how do, uh, so we have to think about how to validate them, and uh, the validation we are doing is just uh, fatigue testing. So we just have a test dedicated for testing our element like this one, and each of the tests is about 25 to 50 samples. Okay, uh, final element we are using to calculate the stress of the loss because we have a lot of type elements, and also that's the reason why for each of you we have to use to get things. So then we just just can have something for this axis, right? The stress of the things. The next thing is we need to understand uh, how to fill in this, uh, this, this axis. And the one we are doing by uh, scanning electron microscope. 
and we can see that you know they are varying a lot, and it's very difficult to detect that. You can see that the fatigue crest is starting from the north, at the bottom of the, of the stepping groove, something like this one. And uh, but after after a few of them, we just give up this because it took us too much uh, effort to do it. Okay. So then we are thinking about uh, the other effort. This, this is what we are using a 3D microscope. So actually, this one is Aligona. They just demonstrate something like that outside. Uh, we just measure both of the notch by Aligona, like this one. After that, we do the fatigue testing. And then, of course, one of the notch is broken. OK. After that, we just took the broken notch and then try to do the three-dimensional measurement again. At the end, uh, and you go to somewhere, they have some option just to put them together, and then we, we can see. So this one is the original one, just listen here. And then you have something like for this part, and this one is uh, So when you put them together, you can clearly determine uh, what kind of depth you are doing. So that's a, a bit more easy method to, 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 detect the, to detect the depth of the crack, or to, to, to calculate the, for the crack size, so to speak. The, the x axis the, the gamma Okay, so after that, what we have done is we, we just do something. So, this is a typical, uh, uh, typical image of a three dimensional image of a notch, the notch is uh, by Abicona. You can see that they are not very, not very repetitive. So, we have some high, like a deep notch here, and some not, and not again a deep notch. And um, that is what we see here is typical the fingerprint the tool cell when we are using them to make the detecting components. So uh, just by looking at this one, we know which set of tools we have to use before. Okay, so what we try to find is a more easier way to, 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 to quantify the defects. So what we done is we try to look for a, a, a roughness parameter, so the roughness is easy to do in our company. Okay, so we, so we try a lot of, of Characteristic uh, general general um, dimension, and we found, for example, this one is the uh, primary profile. You don't see a lot of correlation with the TOT, and we find a good correlation when we are looking at the uh, ROV. So this is the definition of this: something like the maximum depth beyond the, the average profile of the face. And then you can also see that you know the, the crack is initiating here. So very just at the point where you have the massive air um, Okay, so let's see what, or after that, when we are going to, to check with all, the, with all the dimension, just to see, you know, how good is the theory. So what we have, we have here something like we are calling data to the set. So we are making the product by five ranking. So what we just did is after 200 stroke, so very new tools, after 200 stroke, we just took our few elements for testing, after 50,000 and also after 100,000. And then we just put them on the test, do the procedure measurement we have, and then just check what happened. Because here, which you see regarding the fatigue strength, we also have some quality issue uh, in and then from those. We also have uh, a lot of data. We can check them also. And once in a while, we just took the match from the production and just put them on test test, and then just to see what happened. Okay. And additionally, we want to sort to uh, considering alternative process. So this one is a very special one. Uh, this one we are calling as to the owner. And actually, what we are doing is, you know, we have the element, we just pump some uh, diamond pass through it, uh, reverse and back. And because of the high pressure and because of the diamond presented inside the material, you get a very nice surface finish. And you get also, just compare the number, you get also very high numbers of this kind of stuff. Okay, so let's see in the Kitagawa uh, diagram point of view uh, how it should like. So you remember, we want to determine the theoretical fatigue limit, and we think that's the one where we just have our not electrochemical policies. So that's the one you find. That's the one electrochemical one. Okay. Then most of the data is just very nicely fitting into this line. So this theoretical line. And also, but three of them just exceptionally just outside the point, outside the line. And we just found out those are the ones from s 2 Holland. So I, you know that we just, on the high pressure, we're just pushing some paste through the opening in order to polish the nose. And by that, you not only make a very nice surface finish, bit, but you also introduce a lot of residual stresses. Okay. And, in order to, and so we have those residual stress measured and just, 
just want to show it to them again. And here we have to, to we have to normalize the data because you know we have two dimensions there and we need to normalize them. And this is how it's look compared to the theoretical one. Okay. So actually, you know, we found a way that is working for us, you know, to, to, to control the, 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 the quality of our components uh, from the fatigue point of view. And also we found a way of uh, looking at alternative surface in the future. So if someone came by and they had some new idea about how to make the surface in the most effective way, then this is the way we are going to check it. Okay. Of course, besides a lot of testing, because you know we also have to uh, we test a lot. Okay, so at the end, what we have done, we were just you know deriving some position for. It. So first, you know, hardness is important for the thread, the fatigue strength. So we just develop some methodology to measure the hardness. So you can see again the element, we just cut off the head and then you know, measure the hardness. And they look very nice, so we need to have the hardness and they're not the same. So it looks very nice, for example, like this one. Uh, we should stress is important, and you know, we have we have a fixed seminar company, so it's our work. And then we're just, you know, using the methodology, which is developed also, we're going, we are pulling up the slip building methods. And I remember that I think you will think power, they are quite but also very deep into this topic also. Uh, okay, and then at the end, you know, in order to determine the defects, we need just to have a kind of measurement of using the, the adico microscope to measure both of the notch, then, uh, you know, it's some procedure to subtract things up. Uh, and at the end, arriving at the uh, R3, what is the lowering parameters, and it's how we are viewing the defects. And, and, uh, okay, so some conclusion. We have some time. Uh, Element fatigue, you know, amazingly, the, 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 the theoretic relation works very well. And we, we test them also on all the components, and, and somehow, you know, when you don't have any data, it's very, very good approach somehow. Um, so, again, regarding the constructing of the Kitagawa, I think literature value helped us in the first step, and after that, we can do some measurement to check it, but they match very well. Uh, RV max is a good measure of the effect side in our case, so we are dealing with blanking groups and the kind of things. And uh, you know, we can use them to, to, to introduce a lot of activity in our company regarding quality control and also scanning uh, the screen and process. Okay. Thanks. Okay.